in the spirit of high performance teams, I've managed to track down Lewis Pugh, the uh, Arctic Adventure Long Distance Endurance Swimmer. How are you, Lewis? Great. Thank you so much for coming and visiting me. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, Lewis, so you, uh, in your many adventures, how do you go about choosing those team members? I, I look for three things. The first thing I'm looking for is people who are passionate about protecting the oceans. So the reason why I do these swims is to try and highlight what's happening in the oceans. Sure. So I'm looking for people who are really passionate about the issue. The second thing I look for is excellence. So when you're swimming in the Arctic or in the Antarctic and the conditions are so dangerous, not just for me, but for the whole team, sure. you need people who are passionate about excellence. Uh, and the third thing I'm looking for is the attitude. So I try and avoid choosing people who are pessimistic or cynical on the one end, but also who are daydreamers on the other end. You know, people who say to me, oh, Lewis, what could possibly go wrong? Just dive in, go for it. Sure. Uh, I look for people who are realistic optimists. They say, let's roll up our sleeves and let's give this a really good go. And when you've got the right attitude, then it takes you a long way. It takes you an awful long way. Okay, great. Thank you. Now, when you go on these missions, obviously, there's a lot of things that you need to take care of. You know, there's there's key roles for people in your team. You've got to make sure everything's done, the equipment's checked. Do you use checklists in your missions? Uh -huh. we, we didn't used to. And then on one expedition where we were trying to get a lot of scientific data, we actually forgot to put the watch on my hand, which would record all the, all the data. And ever since then, we've got a checklist. So absolutely everything has got a checklist. You may have remembered Usain Bolt when he did the 100 meters. I think sure. in, in one of the Olympic Games, he forgot to actually tie his, his lace. That's yes, right. he still won. But you've got to be so careful, especially when you're operating in these high risk environments, you do have a checklist. Okay, great. And then uh, lastly, Lewis, uh, this is just an intro for something in the future. But uh, how do you keep yourself fit? What's your fitness routine between missions when it's not all stakes on the line? So I always try and keep my fitness level at a certain, at a certain uh, level. But then when I'm going to train for an actual expedition, then I add on uh, you know, a huge amount. One of the most important things is ensuring that I have courage. Okay. okay. And courage is a little bit like a muscle. If you're not exercising it on a daily basis, then you, you start softening up, especially when you get to my age. So, <laughs> okay. so occasionally I go down to Fishhook in False Bay uh, and I go for a swim at night. Wow. Not, a long, not a long swim, but when you're swimming in False Bay at night, everything looks like a shark. Everything feels like a shark. Every piece of kelp you, you, you touch feels like a piece of shark. It feels like a shark and, and, and it's, it's terrifying. Okay. And that may sound like absolutely crazy. You know, why on earth would you go and do a swim late at night in False Bay? Well, the reason why I do it is because if I couldn't do that, if I didn't exercise it on a daily basis, then when I arrive in the Arctic and the Antarctic where you're dealing with fearsome animals, sure. much more dangerous than the great white shark, okay? And you are dealing with water which is minus 1.7 and sometimes air temperature which is minus 37, you'd never be able to get in there and do it. Okay, keep yourself alive. Keep yourself alive. Thank you, Lewis.